Hello, everyone. Welcome to NFNLP today. And today we're talking about motivation to failure. I love the topic. Why motivation leads to self-sabotage. Why it's a false god, you know, uh, and all this fun stuff. It, to me, it's a fun topic. Uh, and people uh, misunderstand until they really get into it. So as always, I always start this with, those of you here found me, but my contact info is nfnlp.com. I'm on Twitter, Instagram. I'm redoing those accounts, by the way. I'm going to redo my website, drwillhorton.com. NFNLP is the classic uh, training site. And always remember, the only easy day was yesterday. So let's get to work. Um, so here we go. So I always like to start a training with the focus our minds, because the way our minds work is if you ask a question, your mind looks for an answer either consciously or subconsciously, it starts your mind on a different trajectory. So whenever you're attacking anything you want to approach, learn, do, watch a video, do anything is, you know, if you ask yourself, what can I learn new today? Because a lot of what I'll be talking about, you might have heard in different ways, but how many times have you heard something for the third or fourth time and you see it differently or you hear it differently? Much like when you watch a movie that you really enjoy and you go back and watch it again, you go, oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, I didn't notice that. And how can I apply this info, both personally and professionally? How can I apply it to myself and if you help other people or friends, family, whatever it happens to be? And of course, one of my favorites is how can I enjoy this class today? So why motivation can lead to sabotage, right? So what you're going to learn? Well, we're going to learn about, in my opinion, why motivation can lead to sabotage. Uh, and so what if you learn this, right? What if you learn this? We're gonna to try to give some examples that are real, right? I'm gonna keep moving my picture around, drive people crazy. Uh, and what if you learn this? Well, it'll shift how you approach motivation for change in yourself and other people. I like to start with, you know, the wrong use of motivation. You know, I love this little picture. Um, everything happens for a reason. T sometimes is you're stupid and make bad decisions because we all do, right? Um, uh, but at the time, it may seem like a good decision. Do they not? That's, that's the trick, right? So let's look at motivation. Well, basically, it's a jump start. It's a tool, right? So I got the little tools in the corner, right? And it should only be used to be a jump start, if you will. It's kind of like taking an energy drink or a big cup of coffee before you have to uh, do something, you know? Um, because it, much like an energy drink, much like a cup of coffee, I see people, and I do it too, I'll be honest, you know, drink a energy drink as I'm going to the gym, uh, it will fade over time. It just will. And so will motivation, unless you do it right. And here's an example. I like to give real, real examples. A common one is uh, New Year's resolutions, right? The, uh, we have a lot of them. Everybody has different ones. Redo my business, do this, do that. But a general one, always in the top five of something like 75% of the people is this will be the year I get in shape. This will be the year I get in shape. So you're motivated, right? Maybe you watch a couple of videos. You're like, yes, I'm going to do it this year. You're all pumped. You're motivated. So you run down and you, uh, you, join, a, you join a gym, right? So Thank you for joining gyms because it keeps it open for those of us that, that have been gym members for forever. So you join a gym. Then you, uh, maybe you, you go and because now we have social media at our, at, at our disposal, you go and you follow or you look up fitness type, fitness models or bodybuilders, whatever you're into, right? Then you might even run and get some new workout clothes. That'll help motivate me. You're shopping, you're feeling motivated, right? So you buy some workout clothes thinking this will look good or that'll look good. Uh, that's more for women. Guys just kind of stagger into the gym with whatever they have. Um, but, you know, so you do that. But by the second week, suddenly you're th saying, <clears throat> excuse me, I need motivation. First week you go to the gym regularly, you're pumped, you're motivated, maybe a couple weeks, there's no time frame, but definitely by the second month, suddenly you say, I need motivation, right? And if you need motivation, you've already failed, right? There was a meme going around and uh, I saw it with different people. I love when people take a saying they like, 
and it, who knows where it comes from. A lot of them are very old, but then they'll put it with a picture of someone most people like, like Morgan Freeman or uh, uh, Tesla or uh, Elon Musk, right? They'll put up, and one is one was the uh, thing was, uh, you know, what are you telling uh, uh, an entrepreneur to motivate them to really get going, right? And I actually think this goes back to Jim Rohn, by the way, but he, he kind of said, well, if you need a lot of external motivation, you're probably not an entrepreneur, right? Um, and this could be for anything, whether it's working out, whether it's writing a book, uh, whether it's just business stuff, I have a little group I'm involved in, you know, we're talking about redoing, yeah, uh, it, the training part of it's morphed into building our businesses and doing some cool stuff. And, you know, and so you want to redo your business, you, you're all motivated, had a good speaker, we're talking, we're jazzed. Do you follow through? That's the magic question. Where'd the motivation go, right? So that's what I wanted to kind of hit. It's a quick talk, right? Because what happens a lot of times, we pick the wrong target when we're trying to get motivated. I didn't even take the Shutterstock thing off this, so bear with me, <clears throat> right? And if you don't like that body, I'll get into that, right? But let's say you want to get in shape. You're a guy, right? Um, so you pick a motivation like, like this, right? Whatever it happens to be, right? Because it motivates you. It doesn't have to motivate other people, right? I'm going to get into like, when I start talking about that, people go, yeah, but that's gross or this is gross. Or I put up a female fitness model. doesn't matter. But what happens is you pick the wrong target. So, you, so if I want to get in great shape and I'm, and this is the guy I want to look like, right? You, you begin to see what you're doing is failure. Because what, what that happens is you're, you see failure as your success is not comparable to that goal, right? To look that way, um, it takes a lifetime of work. And if you want to build a, a, a seven-figure business, there's certain things you have to do. And if you pick the guy or the lady at the, at the time doing it, there may be a lifetime of work. And we're seeing the end result. We're seeing them, you know, in the great shape, um, whatever it happens to be, or their practice is booming, whatever it is that they happen to be doing. So you see the end result, but you don't see the work behind the scenes and the failures and the, and the, and the false starts and all the things they had to go to, through, right? And so... There's a way to fix this, but we think it's motivation. I need a different motivation. I'm going to read the right book. I'm going to um, listen to the right motivational speaker. And whenever I talk about that and, and, and people go, you're kind of hypocritical to say that because you're a motivational speaker. I've never, ever in my life called myself a motivational speaker, right? I, I'm a brain trainer. I'm a, I'm a success coach, whatever you want to call it like that. I don't, you know, maybe I can say things to help get you jump started. But, you know, it, it's different. So, so again, what, why motivation fails is, first of all, you're picking the wrong target or you're picking the target at the wrong time. You're seeing the end result uh, of that person. Like if it's a guy who wants to get in great shape like that. Well, first of all, there's the age discrepancy if I'm going to model this guy, you know. Uh, I'm a little long in the tooth to totally reshape a lot of things, right? Not, I think you could do magic, but it, there's some interesting stuff, right? So again, it's, you know, you pick the wrong goal, you pick the wrong target. But the big thing I think most of us do, and I'm gonna hammer on this, is you pick, it's a great target. You're gonna model this guy or this girl or this business or this writer, or whatever it is you're gonna model, great. But you're picking them at the wrong time. You're picking the final result. You know, I did a course a while ago, you know, what makes Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins. And people want to model Tony Robbins, you know, speaking in front of 10,000 people and doing what he's doing and rocking this and rocking that. Great. But it, you will have to look at the work behind the scenes. He didn't start out doing those. He started out doing small classes, 10, 20 people. He started out actually being the gopher for Jim Rohn. Right. And then, uh, you know, helping run little Jim Rohn mini seminars and businesses. Right. And this is very important if you want to be a, 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 some kind of like trainer speaker is he got trained in how to do seminars. 
you know, pro profitably do seminars by a guy that was very good at it, right? And then he also went supposedly and hung out with uh, Warner Earhart on how to build a, a, a funnel to keep people in the system, right? And so if you don't have all that in your background, you want to model Tony Robbins being on stage with the with the multimedia and the music and the people dancing, great, but you don't have the background to get there, right? And, th and then you will fail, right? You will, you will set yourself up for failure, right? Because you'll jump in and you'll work out hard for a few weeks. You know, you'll start your book, you'll go to the gym, you'll start to redo your business, you'll take a class, you'll sign up and you'll start going to class, right? But you compare yourself to your now at the start of where you are in your current state to what the person is, you know, to what, uh, you know, you're comparing your now, if you're 40 pounds overweight and you haven't worked out and then you're like, this is my goal and you work out hard for six weeks. Well, I don't look like that. Well, excuse the expression, no shit, Sherlock. You don't look like that, right? So you, you can't compare your start to their current state, whether it, you know, person that's written eight books and you're just starting your first book. You're like, well, where's my book? Well, you're comparing it to the to that end result. And what happens, I think I call it the, you hit the why try wall. Like why try, what's the use, right? And so you throw the baby out with the bathwater. So let's say you started working out and you haven't worked out. And you know, it's been a month, let's say two months, let's say you're pretty motivated. Um, and you know, you've gained a little strength, you know, you can lift a little more weight, you can walk a little farther, whatever it is, you, you, you've made a leap, but compared to that goal, you know, you do your first seminar and you got five people in the room and you're like, damn, but damn, Tony Robbins gets 8,000, right? Well, Tony Robbins spends the equivalent of a, uh, uh, the gross national product of a small country to build his seminars. I don't know if you have that kind of back end to, to build that, right? So you throw the baby out with the bathwater. It, it's no use. I can't do it, right? So you give up, right? You become, and taken to the nth degree, you feel hopeless. Like, why, why try? I, I, and I get that all the time, you know? You've given up hope, right? You've given up hope. Then you're in a world of hurt, right? So instead of motivation, what's needed? Well, it's that terrible word, discipline, right? It's that terrible word that most of us don't want to deal with, which is discipline, right? But it's not that it's not as bad as people make it out to be, right? And a lot of times, you know, when you look at someone like, let, let's say, get in shape, because that's a good one to, to kind of model easily, and like, well, why don't I have their discipline to work out regularly, right? Well, first of all, you have to go and figure out what is their discipline to do this? What's going on behind the scenes? Uh, sometimes maybe they just enjoy exercise. If they enjoy exercise, it's probably easier for them to exercise. They enjoy writing their book. They enjoy building their business. That doesn't take as much discipline, right? But then they also, generally the highly successful people understand how to ripple out from what they enjoy. Maybe it's the working out to again, going back to my picture, which I don't care if you like it or not, right? 60% of this guy or 70% is his diet and following through, you know? He's not cheating. He doesn't do a cheat day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, even if you don't like that look, you know, it's like, hmm. So they take what they maybe enjoy working out and they can use that to leverage into getting the discipline to do the things behind the scenes that they need and or half, half, to do, right? So the real work of motivation is mindset, drive, discipline, focus. Basically, it's doing it when you don't feel like it, right? But if you think the right motivational speaker is going to do it or whatever it is, it's it's going to it's going to set you back, right? And so you have to develop them and so the missing ingredient that people don't think about when they think they need motivation is what's the mindset of this person or thing that you're modeling? What's the mindset, right? And then you look at what's the what was their drive to get there? Maybe you could steal their drive, right? Maybe not, but maybe, right? And then you can begin to model parts of their discipline to get there. Is there anything about this you like? Uh, just I was telling the guy I was going to do this, and at the gym, 
because I'm an exercise fanatic. Um, and, and, and he started talking about guys at the gym that, you know, like from the waist up, they look great. Six pack abs, big chest, big bulk. I mean, they look, you know, if you're into that look, they're like that, but they got little skinny legs, right? Because they enjoy working out their chest, their back, even their abs, they look great. They, they don't like doing legs, right? So they look like that from the waist up, from the waist down, little chicken legs. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's pretty funny. It's pretty common, right? Uh, and so, you know, you have to begin to figure out like the discipline of the people that do it and break down their focus. And again, that focus is doing it when you don't feel like it, right? It's easy to work out when everything's working good and you, 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 uh, you got the time right now and you're feeling great. You got a good night's sleep, da, 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 da. You can go in and maybe work out or you can work on your book or you could work on your business, but can you do it when you don't feel like it? That's the magic question, right? That becomes the magic question, right? And I always talk about this. Yeah, and it's a lot more than just doing it regularly, right? I always harp on this routine or ritual versus a habit, right? And, and how it works, right? You can have routines and even rituals that you do in certain situations. Um, but does it become a self-generating habit? The people that are truly successful, it becomes part of what they do, right? Um, and again, I always use like, let's use the military. Some of you have heard my little story, but you get a, 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 a young man or woman goes in the military at like 18 to 22, uh, let's say the United States Marine Corps, because they work out more than the other branches. And, um, and so they're in the, the Marines um, for four to six years, and they look great. They're in shape because they're working out every day. They're running, you know, five, six days a week, you know, unless they're on leave, they're, it's part of their workout, right? They're, they eat okay, but they're working out. It's part of their training, and their uniforms are squared away. They look good, right? And then they get out of the core at 26. So let's say they've been in six, eight years, right? And so you'd think, well, they're going to have this lifetime of discipline because they've done this literally a couple of thousand times, if not more, right? Um, so if you figure 300 days a year out of the year, they're working out and they were in six years, that's 1,800 workouts over a period of time. And the false idea that it only takes 21 days to make or break a habit. No, it can take a few days to make a routine or a ritual based on external sources, right? Because a lot of those guys, when they go on leave, they don't work out the, the two weeks or the, the month they're on leave. A lot of them, not all, right? So it never became an internal discipline. It became an external association, right? And so what begins to happen for the people that it becomes second nature, it becomes a habit to work out or a habit to eat right uh, or a habit to work on your book or your business, right? Because A, you start by scheduling it in till the schedule becomes second nature, right? And addiction basically is one level up where it becomes a self-generating reward system. And I always say like, I'm an exercise addict, right? because it's a self-generating reward system. I feel good when I'm leaving the gym. I feel good when I'm walking in. I know I'm gonna bullshit with some of the people. It's part of my associations, um, but it's self-generating. And the, neuro you know, the, the, the neurochemicals are flowing because I'm working out. It, it's giving me that dopamine boost. So it happens like that. So what we have to do is begin to think about the, the way one thinks about the beliefs, right? And again, like an in, in eating example, you know, if you're just starting out trying to eat healthy, right? You can't compare your start to a person that eats healthy their whole life, right? Or again, like exercise, you know, you're starting out, you haven't exercised, you haven't done much, right? And now you're going to compare yourself to somebody, say your age, maybe even a little older. I always pick up, I always tell people, pick a person your age or a little older, right? Especially for exercise and diet. Well, if they've been doing it for 30 years, you can't jump in at the same level, right? So you can't compare your start to someone that's been doing it forever. And what you can do, however, is take a lesson from like master marathon runners. 
uh, a lady, there's a book called Closer, Clearer, More Focused. I'll, I'll put it in uh, later. Um, but she talks about like when she would study like marathon runners, people that could run. And what it was, they had moving targets, right? They pick a target, like if they're running, they're not in the lead at first, they pick someone in front of them and they keep behind that person till they catch that person. And then they would get the person in front of them and they kept moving forward or a goal or a mountain, uh, right? And as soon as you start to get to that one, you have to pick the next one, right? You're not picking the final goal if it's a marathon, 26.2 miles, or if you're on a forced march, they kind of teach this in um, um, some of the trainings in the military about like, you know, pathfinder and rangefinder and, and things like that is like, okay, you got your target, it's that mountain or it's that stream. And as soon as you get to that, you're also, now you're looking at the next target and the next and the next, right? Um, so if you do that, then it becomes easier to do. And a lot of the marathon runners this lady interviewed uh, talked about a lot of them didn't want to break into the lead until the race was well underway, right? Because it was easier to focus on like the person running in front of you, you know, or this or that, right? And once you're in the lead, now you got to pick, ex, you know, um, targets. And uh, there's a really good book called You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And he always talks about before he would run a race, he got into marathon running later. Um, he would always drive or walk the course so he could set targets in his mind as he's running. Okay, there's this mountain, right? I gotta run up this mountain, right? That would be a target. And then the next target, and then the next target, right? And if you do that, then you can maybe plan it in your mind and begin to find things in the process that you enjoy, right? Um, whatever it happens to be. And it's usually small incremental boosts. It's not making it to the, to the mountaintop, it's like getting to this, getting to this, and what can I enjoy along the way, right? So, so the proper use of motivation, right, is find a model. And I always say, if it's any, someone around your age, right, within a couple of years, uh, and I always usually tell people, if it's a physical goal, your age may be a little older, so you know you can get there, right? It's always uh, ironic when, um, Anybody else find it amusing when you're watching television and these uh, commercials come on about getting beautiful skin, mainly geared to women, and they're putting these girls up there in their mid twenties. <laughs> it's like I don't, you know, man, what? Yeah, it's like ah, you know, and so you know, some mature person's buying it, but it's like, eh, you know, some of the good models, uh, good marketing. Um, uh, you know, they use uh, more mature people in their age. Yeah, it's Clearer, Closer, Better by Emer Emily Baselitz, something like that. Uh, great book. And it taught, and, and there's other things she talks about, how to use your mind the way it actually works, right? So find a model. And then try to do some research about where did they start and what were their first victories. A book I highly recommend is that uh, You Can't Hurt Me. It's a little graphic for a lot of people. Um, and I love the audible because they're also doing podcasts, but he talks about his first victories. You know, he was way overweight and then he decides he wants to become a Navy SEAL. So he had to lose all this weight and how he lost the first 10 pounds. Then the second, it wasn't like one day I weighed 297 pounds. Now I'm in uh, SEAL training at a, at 210, right? That's a big jump. He actually breaks down how he did it. Right. And just as importantly, he tells you his setbacks, right? So what what were they, where did your model start? What were their first victories? And I forgot to put up there, what were some of the setbacks that they had to overcome to get there, right? And then you have to, excuse me, link it to what drives you. Their motivation is different than your motivation, right? Their drive is different than your drive. Maybe, you know, if you're gonna model an author and, this person's motivation is um, uh, just to sell books to make money. That's good. But if that's not your motivation, maybe your motivation is to write the books actually to help people or to do this. Whatever it is, there's no right, there's no wrong. It's just kind of interesting. 
But if you link it to what drives you, magic begins to happen, right? And so then you have to follow through. The other thing I think with motivation that people do is they're, they're switching motivations. They're switching strategies too quick, right? Follow one course until success. That's a different way to look at focus, right? If you follow this course long enough to see if you can get the success, right? So if you're going to do this, follow through until it, see if it's really working for you. Don't give it, you know, six weeks into a workout and say, I don't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? I did have a dear friend one time, and this was 20 something years ago, because I still lived up north. And he decides he wants to join a gym. He's going to get in shape for his next birthday. I'm like, great. And he goes, you work out all the time? Yes, I do. Let's work out. So, you know, we scheduled, so we'd work out together. And he was all motivated, did everything we're, we're talking about here. And then after about, I think it was six, going on eight weeks, he's like, I don't know. It ain't working. I go, what do you mean? You're getting a little stronger. You know, when we first started, you couldn't bench press, you know, 75 pounds. Now you're up to like, um, whatever it was, like 135. And you're doing this. Yeah, but you know, and he was comparing himself to like an Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like, and I'm like, dude, you got to do this, this, and this. And also underneath it, exercise is not a blank ticket to eat like shit. Right. If you, the, yeah. But anyway, and he quit. He threw the baby out with the bathwater. He didn't follow the course until he got some success. Right. Uh, and no external motivation is going to give that to you. Right. You got to begin to take it internal and look for the small little things on the inside. Right. And so just wanted to talk about that. So that's why I think motivation can lead to failure, to giving up, to saying, why do it? Right. Uh, and eventually you'll know, bounce for, from a couple of different motivational things or motivational books or this or that. And then finally you give up and you walk away um, uh, because you're not doing the things that we talked about. So next time, maybe next week, I'll do one on why visualization of your goals fails most of the time and how to fix it. It seems to be a small tweak that most people don't really do. And I just really started adding and it's changed a lot, right? So that'll be next time. Um, and we'll have some fun with this. And so again, what I want you to do now is, is leave it open to making some change. So think about something you wanna get motivated, right? Uh, because I always like to give you something you can actually do. So think about something you wanna, you're motivated to do, redo your business, uh, a couple of people on this, I know are working on like their Instagrams or, or social media platforms, things like that, whatever it is. Great. Lose, exercise, lose weight. I don't care what it is. Right. So think about it. And I want you to do the mental flip. And what the mental flip is, think about something in your life that used to be true and now is not. Used to live somewhere else. Now you live in the house you live in. Used to do something else. Now you do whatever it is you do. A lot of people in this call, uh, I, I, what, what were you before you were a hypnotist, right? Or a nelper. So think of something that used to be true and now is not, right? And what I want you to do is begin to think about taking the you that sabotages yourself and put it into the part of your mind that's no longer true for you. So it's back there. In my case, it's back up in Indiana. Uh, it, it's, it's not where I live now, right? And then when you think about sabotaging yourself or giving that excuse, like, I don't feel like it today. I'm not going to do the work. I'm not going to reach out. I'm not going to write the letter. Whatever it is you got to do today, right? Do your exercise, whatever it is. When you, when you get that voice, just you say to yourself, that's not who I am anymore. That's not who I am anymore, right? I used to be a person that procrastinates, self-sabotages and all that but that's not who I am anymore, right? And so work on really hammering that in. Put the idea of you failing into the part of your mind that used to be true and now is not, and then put the idea of you succeeding into the area that's true for you. And when you start to sabotage, and you will, we all do, you know, things happen. I don't feel good today, it's whatever. It's hot, it's humid, it's raining, whatever is going on. So, and you think about, not doing it, skipping it, doing something like that. You think to yourself, that's not who I am anymore. I take action. It's not who I am anymore. I take action and then start the process. 
and see where that leads you. So that's the quick uh, presentation today. Next week, as I said, next week, again, I'll talk about why visualization of your goals fails, you know, uh, and how to, there's a little tweak, it seems like, that really seems to help people. That'll be next week. Tell your friends, family. Uh, if you like this, if you really like this, I'm Will Horton. Spread the word. If you don't like it, I'm uh, somebody else. And keep it to yourself.